say to his troops in the locker room. Things happen, all right? Because you can play slow isn't good enough. All right, let's make them get play through our great big can speed up the game because they won't be able to handle it. They won't be able to play the speed of play which you can play. They can't. And let's take our chances back. I'd say the way the first 10 minutes, they got the message. Oh, absolutely. And they came out and uh, got two goals right off the bat, but then also had one answered with Ohio State getting that goal from Irizarry. So it is, we really uh, thank the coach for uh, giving us that special look into the locker room. Don't get that uh, all the time. Some coaches, you know, they, they don't want the cameras in there as a distraction, but he knows it is a very focused team. Halfway through the second 45, the Hoosiers Struck first with two goals in the first 10 minutes of this second half with the Buckeyes, Danny Irizarry, responding seconds later. They mentioned Alston, who came off uh, just before the break there. He is off on the sidelines. He's up and walking around. It's a bit of a knee injury, but uh, doesn't, seem to be, uh, doesn't seem to be serious. He uh, could very well uh, come back into the game. Adlard keeps the corner close. And Matt Gold will break up the exchange. And it was Tommy Meyer that came in to replace him as uh, we, we saw Coach uh, mentioning that. Tommy, just a freshman, has been two-time All-American, played on the under-17 World Cup team. His uh, dad, talk about bloodlines here, his dad was a high school national player of the year, played in four Final Fours at Indiana, and then uh, won national championships in 82 and 83. But then on top of that, has two uncles who are in the St. Louis Soccer Hall of Fame, Tommy and Kevin Howe. And uh, being in the St. Louis Soccer Hall of Fame is uh, nothing to sneeze at. Very strong tradition dating back to the uh, early 1900s here. Well, the lineage of soccer in that city is incredible. As this work down toward the corner flag, it's going to result in a Hoosier goal kick. Got a look at Hagedorn, who commenced the scoring a couple of minutes into this second half. Jay Kane. Let the wincing begin as he takes this goal kick. Played in pain since midway through the first half. Mellencamp on a 50-50, nods away. McGill. The junior from Oak Brook, Illinois. Works the far side of the field for Rome. Now working back centrally, Varzia. Gable comes up on the run from the near channel. Delivers inside. And it just squeaks by. So we see a little bit of a difference here in the formation for uh, Ohio State as we see uh, Josh Bredo there. And uh, Barzia seems to be dropping back a little bit into that what we came accustomed to in his uh, central midfield role. But uh, they've got uh, Bredo up there along with Andrew McGill getting uh, three forwards on the field at the same time and uh, probably just dropping back Barzia and let him do some playmaking for this Buckeyes team. Gold, Hagedorn away. McGill, Scales slipped it in, but Ring takes back. Hoosiers on the move. Alexander drives it in. Wilmarth was in the area. Can't say enough about the uh, contribution from Wilmarth off the bench of replacing Will Bruin who I you know and I, I didn't notice he was being marked out of the game we mentioned that Ohio State here's a nice ball here from Alexander Crossan and uh, Wilmarth nearly sort of hits him on the back as it goes across uh, overran it a little bit but uh, Will Bruin I, it wasn't necessarily I don't think that he was being marked out of the game this uh, Ohio State typically plays more of a zone defense and uh, I just think that they maybe crowded him out and uh, were able to keep him in check for this game. And Will Marth is in to uh, add a spark. 
be a Hoosier throw on the far sideline. Balkan. Good job by Gold there to recover and take away for Ohio State. Moving forward, it's McGill. Under 20 remaining. McGill. Going at Sarkoti. Now Alexander fronts. McGill, nifty footwork. Varzia denied once the second effort with ring clearing. Ohio State getting dangerous, but hesitant to pull the trigger in that final third. Nothing but red shirts in that penalty area. On the end of it, the fans want a penalty. As we play on, as that is ripped by Gable, but Bretto certainly came in and was in some mischief there around the penalty spot. Yeah, definitely worth some contact there, but no call from the official. But the uh, fans have reacted for less, that's for sure. So uh, take that with a grain of salt that we are in Columbus. Here's, uh, here's another look at it right here. Ball played in and yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't have made that call. So went after it and he definitely did make a play on him, but I don't think you give a penalty for that. McGill off, Lomnicki on. A good no call on that in that situation. You, you don't want to you don't want to have a uh, a game, especially a game this important, be decided or changed uh, on a on a call like that. Chested by the man just on to the surface, Slam Nicky. Ohio State building forward. Here's Gold on the far channel. Rome comes forward. Serves it in. The clearance rather poor and then carried toward the byline and out. Ohio State will learn a corner. That was another situation where Kane probably could have come off his line to grab that out of the air, but he, I think it looked like they maybe communicated there with, the, with his defenders and uh, decided they wanted to stay back. But with the ball that close, it seems like he should at least punch it away. Approaching the final quarter hour. The Hoosiers leading by a goal header. Gable almost caught the tail end of it. I like that went off of, was that off of Noshang? Uh, I don't know, yeah, I think it might have been. Rome had the initial nod toward net for Ohio State. That, if that was off of Noshang, that would be the second game in a row that he has saved the Hoosiers. And we'll have another look. Yes, it was. That is the exact, the exact replay from Louisville and another save. Kane, brilliant. And Rome, who almost scored moments ago on the header, just a little bit of a toe poke right outside the six yard box as Ohio State brings the floodgates forward. You gotta like, you gotta like this, uh, this effort from Ohio State pushing forward and an opportunity there. Point blank range, and probably should have done better with that. But a great save by Kane. Reaction save diving to his left. Another corner kick for Ohio State. It is their fifth. Hoosiers have had seven. Out swinger, got loose, and then trickled forward. The Buckeyes will go right back to that corner flag. I mentioned Noshang uh, against Louisville. You gotta say he was the man of the match. He drew the penalty kick that won the game, and he cleared a header off the line in the first half. Ring cleared, came back. Half volley rather poorly taken, but came loose to Irizarry. Tries to hold it just on the edge of the 18, but Alexander, a sliding challenge and tackle. We'll take it back for the Hoosiers. That was a great play by Eric Alexander. A crowd obviously wanting a, a foul called, but he just attacked Irizarry right there and, uh, and stripped him of the ball when he could have very well set up a new scoring opportunity for Ohio State. But so here he comes. He's setting up the play. He's, wait, he's gonna send it back in, but Eric Alexander coming from behind, knocking it away. Good, good no call there as well. 
the ebb and flow of this second half has really been positive for both sides. So the first opening, you know, 25 to 30 minutes of the half, you thought maybe we we're going to have a one of those low-scoring Big Ten type of games, but. I think we've seen a lot of offensive flair from both teams. Statistics wouldn't back it up. Obviously, neither team uh, putting a lot of goals in the back of the net this year, but it has been a pretty entertaining game in the second half. In the last few minutes, it's been Ohio State with one-way traffic. A little conversation here in the box, uh, mixing it up. Center official uh, trying to calm things down. Chen Asoera. 13 and a half remaining on this toss. Inside to the area, room! The third time a charm! Level of two! He's the hero again. He scored the winner on Wednesday against Cleveland State. He does it again here, the equalizer. What an effort by Ohio State and their Started off, with, of course, with Tim Gable, that long throw. Falls to Rome at the back. Patrick Rome, the senior from Westerville, Ohio. Great finish. His second. Second goal of the week. Denied once by Noscheng. Off his header. Then his little chip from just outside the six yard box with a phenomenal save by Kane for the third time. He finds the back of the cord, and it is 2-2. Tommy Meyer just getting it out right now. The Hoosier back line under siege here in the second half. He does the smart thing there, but here we have the exact same situation with a long throw coming from Gable from the near side. Tossed in. Away, Rome almost picked up the pieces there. He got a touch. Coming from the back line, the defensive stalwarts have played a big role in the scoring today. That should be no surprise. As good as these teams are defensively, why not have those guys contribute offensively? Yeah, and uh, they can do it all, really, at Indiana or Ohio State. Both, both teams have very good outside backs that can get into the attack. and. Uh, just also mentioned now, Will Bruin back into the game for Indiana. Bruin returns. Advantage and foul Hoosiers. They go forward off the free kick. And you know, side of 12 minutes. A tie really doesn't help either of these teams. Uh, they basically have, they need a win, basically, is the bottom line. There's a volley that was ripped wide and results in an Ohio State goal kick as Noschang tried his luck. There's Will Bruin checking back in. He's been largely ineffective in the, who uh, has been subbed out in the middle of the first half and the uh, second half. And here's a, coming in for Indiana, number 23, Billy Weaver, who uh, came and uh, helped out the team in the last half of the uh, first half and did very well. Weaver and Wilmarth have both made contributions, but you could say with their back line leaking a little bit over the last 10 minutes, Kevin Alston coming off that kind of changed the tone with Ohio State's attack going off of that right-hand side. Adlard inside, Alexander. Weaver tried to sneak in before it was cleared away to the far touch line. I haven't seen Alston. I think he was up and walking around a little bit, and uh, I think he might just be. Uh, Alston uh, took a knock earlier and a knee injury and had to come out of the game and uh, was replaced by Tommy Meyer. The turn back inside. Well, it looked like it hit a hand there. It did. Weavers, and it's back to the Buckeyes. Yeah, he's probably just sitting on the bench, I would imagine, and uh, maybe it, uh, the injury is, uh, is such that they uh, don't want to take a chance and maybe keep him out of the game. They have a lot of confidence in Tommy Meyer and his ability. Into the box. Weaver lets it roll free. Here we go, Ray. Let's go, boys. Jay Kane. 
there he is right there uh, on the bench and uh, cheering his team on. And I doesn't. I, I wouldn't think. I mean, if he was ready to go, they they probably would have put him in by now. He's that important to this back line. But uh, I think at this point you don't want to risk additional injury or making it worse. And uh, they've got Meyer in there. They feel good about that. And uh, got Meyer and Sarkoti in the middle for Indiana. Balchin back towards midfield. It got deflected. That's a nice thing about Bal uh, Balchin's ability to, to be all over the place is that uh, he can play centrally or he can move out wide. So in this case, they, they lose their left back. They can just slide Meyer into the game and then have him drop back into a left back position. 2-2, Two -two. this game crucial in the Big Ten regular season standings. Ohio State is 2-2, two and two. Indiana 1-2. and two. As the Hoosiers trying to build something here. Cannot be rescued on the near touchline by Adlard. And so the Buckeyes will throw. Nine minutes remaining. Over the head of Varzia. Meyer had a glance at it. Comes to rest in the circle. This touched with the hand of Balchin. And results with Ohio State, the quick restart. Trailed by two goals, 10 minutes into the second half. Have valiantly fought back to tie this game. Lomnicki holds in the midfield. Lomnicki scales from the near channel. Here's Ari with some space. Gable has had some nice deliverance from that left flank and going high there, but wide. Goal kick for the Hoosiers. Saturday on the Big Ten Network, the Wolverines bring the spread to West Lafayette for a clash with Curtis Painter and the Boilermakers, or it's a non-conference collision in Bloomington as the Hoosiers aim for a victory against always dangerous Central Michigan. Coverage starts with the Big Ten football Saturday pregame show at 11 a.m. Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Of course, last night, the big football game between Penn State and Ohio State. It's been a, you know, it was a, not the result Buckeye fans wanted, but hey, the, the hockey team beat Number three, Denver, I think four to three, one of the best teams in the country. And if they can get a result here, that might help the healing process a little bit from the football game. The Pioneer hockey team was averaging six goals a game and led 3-1 before the Buckeyes rallied. As the college hockey season just underway. This cleared from the far channel. It's Rome with the touch. And Alexander to throw in for Indiana. Keep in mind, 8 and 0 oh when scoring first, but that lead has evaporated. Balchin slipped through, got on the end of it, went down, and play rolls on. Boy, that I think that might have been a little bit, a uh, little bit tougher. Let's have a look right here. Balchin again coming out of his left back position, using some of the that midfielder mentality. Gets it from Weaver. He's taken down I don't know that's a tough that's a tough one to make too we got six and a half minutes to go here it's definitely uh, good for the players letting them play and it's and neither uh, we haven't had a call uh, that changed the game so we never like to have the, the official be the game changer about to hit six minutes remaining Adlard coming forward clear out of the back it's Balchin Rich Balchin Gold broke it up. Brad Ring hasn't had many touches in a while. Has one there, floating it. Weaver tried to put the moves on Gable and earned a corner. Well, we've got uh, five, uh, 5.45 to go here, and we have a tie game. And of course, uh, for those of you, uh, those soccer fans who miss Golden Goal, we still have it here in the NCAA, even though FIFA got rid of it. But the uh, two 10 minute overtime periods, if the game remains finished. Adlard out swinging in the air and cleared. Are you a fan of the Golden Goal? You know what, it, since it went away, 
uh, I, I kind of miss it because I don't think that there are that many games that where there's a goal scored and then there's an equalizer. I think those games are very few and far between. So I'd say, you know, let, let them play and uh, have a golden goal. Brad Ring got chopped down in the far channel. And in a dangerous area, the Hoosiers going to earn the free kick. Sliding in and clipping Finishes. ring as he goes down and he goes slow to get up. He seems to be. Billy, shift the road! How did you get yards under? off the touchline. We're inside of five minutes. <laughs> A thrilling second half here in Columbus. Served in. Weaver spikes it back. Ball chin a touch. Weaver. In a mess of Buckeyes, and Ohio State will clear. That yeah, was great defense there by the Buckeyes, uh, swarming on Weaver, not letting him get any space, and uh, keeping the ball out of the area. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. The ring comes off. Seems to be all right, but definitely want to give him a breather. We might, we may have overtime, so uh, could bring him back in the overtime period. Here is Zeri. Sends it forward, Che Kane. Alexander has some room on that left flank. Can't connect the final pass. Going toward the final third. Balchin. Gave it away, and it's back to Ohio State. He's trying to send Alexander down the line there, but a little miscommunication between those two on the left side. Notice that uh, Mellencamp has wandered it, usually a wide right-sided player. Weaver has stepped into that role, and Mellencamp now moving more centrally as they try to get the, uh, the game winner as the clock continues to tick, approaching three minutes. Adlard. Noshche turned it back toward the center of the park. Also worth noting that the clock you see on there is uh, when it goes down to zero, that is the end of the half. So it's not uh, no injury time in college soccer. Barzia. Tommy Meyer fending him off. Weaver. Loads it up. Rome. We tied this game at two. We'll work it up the right hand side. There's Bretto. Has cautiously been a concern at times for Indiana throughout this match. Yeah, they're going to push everyone forward and see if they can uh, get a late winner here with two minutes to go. They're going to have uh, Gable come all the way over, on the left back come all the way over and take this throw. See if they can make something happen. Maybe a glancing header to the far post. We'll see. Under two minutes. Long lob in. Rome trying to get in the mix there. No shake. Pumps it back over midfield. Gold. Reto settled it down. Rosari. Now it scales. Rhythm has settled down just a bit. Under 90 seconds. Here is Zeri. Gable. And a foul. We'll go the other way. Clock continues to tick. Maybe one more push here for the Hoosiers. We could be heading for overtime if the ball doesn't cross that line. It 
Starts forward. Great back heel, Bruin. Nosecheg. Bruin trying to use his size inside the area. Will be a whistle in this one. We'll go on the highly talented freshman. The last time the Hoosiers were on the Big Ten Network, they uh, survived a an overtime game against Wisconsin, which uh, Wisconsin was this close to pulling off the upset with a late goal by Indiana. Good clearance, good clearance. So they're used to this uh, overtime drama. Been there four times this season, although Varzia had other thoughts about ending this with 10 seconds remaining. And Kane will play it cool, and we will head for extra soccer. And why not? With so much riding in the balance. As the Big Ten regular season winds down, number two, 22, Indiana. Started strong in the second half with a 2-0 lead, but the Buckeyes of Ohio State work back to tie it. Tied at two. Overtime is next. The nugget we hit on at the start of this match, Josh, the fact that Ohio State had went nearly three years without scoring a regular season goal against Indiana, and that changes here this afternoon, October of 2005 was the last time it happened. But a valiant comeback to tie this game at two and we head to extra soccer this afternoon. Yeah, and we, we definitely on top of that, you want to mention that they have never beaten them in overtime or in the regulation, ever. They've been playing a long time. Oshang is Indiana, right on the attack. Right to left on your screen in the crimson. Foul and outside of the arc. Be a dangerous area as Ring went down. Lamnecki uh, coming in and kind of shoves him down here and trying to go to his right, and he would not let him pass. So a dangerous free kick opportunity here for Indiana. Mentioned that game with Eric Alexander, who scored the uh, the winner against Wisconsin in their, uh, their overtime games. Also beat Evanston three to two. It was. Uh, Bruin scored the game winner in that one. Adlard, Ring. Hover in a triangle around the ball. Lots of different options here for the Hoosiers. We'll see which way they go. Just inside of 30 yards, straight on. Just a minute in. Adlard bends and wins it for the Hoosiers. What a finish. Just absolutely freezes Sikansky, and there's not much you can do when you bend it over the wall like that. He was covering the far post, and it went to the opposite post. So there, there it is. Beautiful bender. Didn't, yeah, I guess it didn't bend that much, but right place, right time, exactly where he needed to put it. The IU set piece master and the Hoosier bench. Jubilation as they will make their run toward the Big Ten regular season. 3-2, Indiana a winner here today. Josh Hackler.